Hello everyone, this is Rob Griffith, Senior Editor of Macworld. I'm sitting here contemplating one of life's great mysteries, and that is, how does a neat bundle of holiday lights turn into this mess of knots when all it's been doing is sitting on a shelf for the last 12 months? I really don't know, but I probably won't solve that one sitting here. So instead, let's talk about the new 10.5 Finder. Yeah, I know, quite the segue, huh? Anyway, the new Finder has a lot of really interesting features, and they're not all necessarily documented or obvious. So in this video, I thought I would take a few minutes and show you some of the more interesting ones that I've found during my time with OS 10.5 Leopard. The first hint is actually one that takes place in System Preferences in the Accounts System Preferences panel. When you see this list of login items, have you ever wondered where they are, what they came from? In 10.5, you can control click any entry and select Reveal in Finder. A new Finder window will open showing you exactly where the file came from. In this case, we have a file from the Adobe installer, Adobe Reader 8. I can command click on the icon in the title bar and see the full path to that file. Again, all I have to do is select an item in the list, control click, select Reveal in Finder, and the new Finder window appears. This example is a program that came from the Which Preferences panel. It's that easy to see exactly where all of your login items come from. Did you know you can use the new Finder to preview your fonts? Just go to your user's fonts folder, squiggle slash library slash fonts, and the first thing you'll notice is that you can see a two-letter preview of every font right there in icon view. Now, it takes a while to populate these icons as it draws them for each of the fonts in your collection, but once they're there, things move quickly. But if that's not enough, you can also use Quick Look. Select a font, press the space bar, and you'll get the Quick Look window. You can then use the arrow keys to move through the fonts folder, seeing a preview of each font as you go. This is a great way to see exactly what each font is without having to open an application. In 10.5, it's now possible to get information on files in the Open dialog. As you know, you can obviously use the Open dialog to open a file by selecting it and clicking the Open button, but say you just want more information before you make that decision. When the Open dialog is on the screen, if you look at the menus, you'll notice they're all grayed out. It doesn't look like you can do anything at all. However, if you press Command-I, you'll see the Finder's Get Info window for the selected file open, and if you notice, the Finder actually came to the front as well. So this is the regular Get Info window with all the information in it that you're used to seeing. When you close it, you can go back to Safari, click another file, hit Command-I, and see the information for that file. So now you can get more information on a file before you make the decision to open it. Do you use network shares a lot? Would you like to be able to get to them faster? Here's a way. Here I've connected to my quad-core machine and mounted a folder called MW Files. To get to it quickly in the future, I can drag the icon from the title bar into the Devices section of the sidebar. When I drop it, you'll see an entry created. Now, in the future, if I need to get to that folder again, I can just go to the Devices section instead of having to go back to Shared into the machine into the Shared folder. When I eject it, it disappears from the Devices section. When I reconnect to the folder, it again appears in the Devices section. This is a great way for fast access. As you know, there are many ways to view photos in OS X. I could, for instance, look at my photos in this folder in Icon View, or I could use the new Cover Flow View and the horizontal scroll bar to flip through them. But one of my favorites is to actually use the new Quick Look View, so I'll go back to Icon View and make a selection of images, and then I'll press the space bar to bring up Quick Look. As you know, you can look at one image at a time, and if I click the next arrow button, or if I use the right and left arrow keys, I can scroll through each of the images in the selection. The Index Sheet button will present an overview of all the images I've selected. So here's the shortcut. Instead of actually using the Index Sheet button, you can use the keyboard. With an image selected, just press Command Return, and you'll go to the Index Sheet. Select an image, command return, and you go to the index sheet. This is a great way to navigate around a selection of images in quick look mode. Another new feature in the 10.5 Finder is the integration of a media browser in the Open Dialog. Here we are in Safari in the File Open Dialog, and you'll notice a media section in the sidebar. And within that, you can see the photos show up, and this is 
a list of photos in both Aperture and iPhoto, and I can scroll through the icons and select any image I like just by clicking on it. However, you can also change the way you view this. With a control click in that area, you can change to a list view, and within list view, you can click on column headers to sort by any of the three displayed column headers. If that's not enough options, you can then control click again and display which columns exactly you would like to see, and add and remove them from the display. You can also choose to open the file in Aperture or in iPhoto directly from there or switch back to Icon View. The last thing I'd like to demonstrate today is that the new Finder respects the copy order in which you select items in the Finder. For instance, here I'm just shift clicking each item in the list and then I'll select Copy and I'll paste them into a text edit document. And as you'll see, the order in the text edit document matches the order in which I selected them in the finder. But now we'll go back and I'll use the command key and I'll just randomly select files from the list, jumping in and out of direct order. As you can see, I'm going up and down and selecting a number of files. I hit command C to copy and command V to paste. And now the order that it pasted matches the order I selected the files. What if you want a long contiguous list? If you do a shift click to select the whole group as I've done here, notice that the second file is actually the last file in the selection. That's because that's the one you selected second. If you really want the list to be in order and you want them all, select the first file, then use shift down arrow to select the rest, copy and paste, and the order will come out as expected. I hope you found that collection of tips and tricks for the new Finder interesting and useful. I think Apple's really done a good job with the new Finder. It's much faster than the old one, and little features such as the ones you've just seen make it much more useful than the old version was. And now, I must get back to the project at hand. We have power, but we still have knots. So until next time, this is Rob Griffiths signing off.